So my name's Dr. Jonathan Griffiths. I'm a GP at Swan Eye Surgery in Winsford in Cheshire. Now, I guess you're thinking that you've been to the GP, you know all about the GP, you know how the GP system works, but there are 10 things that I would like to give you as tips that I think you can use to help you, help your doctor, to help yourself. Now we all know how difficult it can be getting a doctor's appointment and then finding that you've only got seemingly a few minutes in the seat with them. And most GPs will provide just a 10 minute appointment slot for you. Now 10 minutes is not that long, particularly when you have to consider they have to get you from the waiting room in that time, write all the notes up and read through your records as well. What you can do to help with that is first of all, know how long your appointment is. Check with reception when you book. And if you genuinely think that you need more than 10 minutes, mention that to reception. They can probably give you a longer slot if you need it. And then in the consultation, work with your doctor to manage to get through the things that you need to in that 10 minutes. Now, let me just clarify that. If you're the kind of person that needs to write down the things that you want to say to your doctor before you go in, please do that. We do want you to get out the things that you need to talk about. What your doctor will struggle with is if you have a hidden mental list in your head and you go through the first problem and then you say, oh, and also, and the next problem, and also. Just think back to the first point. If you've only got 10 minutes, make sure you're clear about what it is that you want to talk about with your GP and prioritise that list that you might have. Now I know that lots of GPs will be running late and you might think, well, hold on, I've arrived late, they're running late anyway, surely they will see me, and they probably will. The person you need to think about is not your GP, but the next person in the queue waiting to be seen. And if you arrive 10 minutes late, then everybody else for the rest of that surgery will be 10 minutes late as they try to fit you in. So just think about it and be fair on your fellow patients. Now I know we ought to think that, that GPs are all superhuman and will know exactly what it is that you want to talk about. And a good GP will take the time to explore all of that with you to make sure that we cover all the things that you're really concerned about. But just shortcut through that. Just be absolutely upfront about what it is that you're worried about. If you've got a particular concern about your symptom, that you might think that you've got cancer or some rare condition that your relatives have got, mention it to your doctor. They can then address that concern for you right up front. There is not a hierarchy in medicine whereby GPs are at the bottom of the pyramid and consultants in hospitals are at the top. We have all trained exceedingly hard and long to provide GPs that are excellent at dealing with your problem. So trust them and don't think you need a referral on to a specialist all the time. Why does that matter to you? I hear you cry. Well, the point is about how the money flows around the system. Uh, your GP gets a set amount of money to deal with all the patients that they look after for the entire, the entire year. They don't get paid per consultation. And the amount they get paid is really small. Actually, it's less than 40 pence per patient per day. And that's to provide all the care you need. Um, and that's the amount of money that the practice gets in total to provide all the staff and the building and all the services uh, that are there. So be aware of that. GPs are not earning the £700,000 a year that you might read in the newspapers. There might be one out there who's earning that, but the majority are not. So just think about the good value that you're getting from your GP services. This is not a game that we should be playing to try and get the most out of the health service. When you go and see your GP, if they say they don't think you need to have that particular test or that particular referral or that particular treatment, it's not because they're trying to be difficult and awkward. It is because they don't think that that is the appropriate treatment for you at that point in time. Your GP will also understand the risks of over-treating, of over-investigating, of over-referral. Trust your GP. They do want what is best for you. I don't know about you, but I watch TV series and you see the doctor come on and immediately the doctor knows exactly what the problem is, exactly what the treatment needs to be. And they're right first time, every time. Life is not like that. Be aware of that, be patient. Many conditions take time to develop and declare themselves. And many serious conditions look just like minor conditions. If you turn up with a cough, 
Well, that could easily just be a viral cough that we all get from time to time. But of course, a cough could mean lung cancer. A cough could mean that you've got a clot on your lung. There are some serious conditions that you need to take into account. And your GP will be looking for the signs and the red flags to point out the conditions that are immediately need treating in a different way. People seem to think that GPs do a morning surgery, they do an evening surgery, and they sit around with their feet up or on the golf course for the middle of the day. I'm afraid that model is no longer valid. We are not doing that. We are incredibly busy and there's a huge amount of work that we need to do. We are looking at all the letters coming back from the hospital, from all the referrals that we've made. We're making those referrals, making those dictations. We're checking blood results. We are signing prescriptions, whether it be physically or electronically. All of these pieces of work are incredibly important. And the transfer of information is a key form of care. If we were not doing those things um, between our surgeries, uh, your care would suffer for it. We can't manage all those things in that 10 minute slot. So be aware, we're not sat around with our feet up having a cup of tea for three or four hours in the middle of the day. We're busy. And that job is not just to make life difficult for you. It is not just to be a barrier to you getting to see the GP. Times have changed. In the past, the only offer that we had as a GP was a GP appointment. You rang up, that's what you got. Nowadays, there are GPs, there are practice nurses, there are extended nurse practitioners, there are pharmacists, there are physiotherapists, and all kinds of professionals who are there to help you. If you ring up an actual receptionist to give you an appointment with the doctor and insist on that and no other conversation with them, you'll get that appointment with the doctor, but it might not be the right person for you. If you ring up and say, I've got a bad back, how can, I, um, how can you help me? Well, they might say, well, perhaps you should see the physiotherapist. You'll have shortcutted a process to get to the right person that you need to see.